Florentine and Don Jameson. How you guys doing? Good. Good. <laughs> Let's shake your hand. What's up, brother? What's going on? Yeah, we had a nice show here in Pasadena, and uh, we're hanging with you guys now. Yeah. Yep. We had a pretty nice crowd out for tonight, and then last night you guys were at the, uh, was it the Improv out in Hollywood? Yeah, improv in uh, Hollywood, yeah. We did the fancy Hollywood show with all the big stars coming yeah, out. Yeah, Sebastian Bach came and, out. And, yeah. So a lot of our buds came out, and doing a little rock and roll tour out here in L.A., and having fun. Dan, you got your podcast going, Metal Midgets? Yeah. Yeah, we uh, yeah we taped that one last night. We did a podcast, a live tape in uh, San Diego the night before, so yeah, it's, uh, you know, good shit. You're right on. Well, going back to your roots, what was the first band that you really heard that where you just caught the metal bug? I know for Eddie it was Kiss. Same Same with me. Was it? Yeah, I got Kiss Destroyer when I was, I guess, nine or whatever, and I was like, this is the greatest band ever. Like, it's, you know, the music, the image, you know, the larger than life. And I went from there, you know. So the Kiss is what, for me, what started it all out. Sabbath. Sabbath? Yeah, my older brothers got me in there. You know, bring home Sabbath records. I had no choice. Right. We all lived in the same room. They would just crank it. Master Reality, Paranoid. Yeah, right? I know in the early 70s, God, it could have been a lot of different yeah, things. All, yeah. yeah, I mean, you could have been a big Bay City Rollers fan. I mean, if things went the wrong way. I did like their hair. Yeah, they had good feathered hair. I did. It was funny, like you Joe know. Bartnick over there, you can't see, but his hair is a little kind of feathered. I was watching some video on you guys, and I don't know, this must have been right before you got married. You guys were, I think it was on, it was on ABC or something. You guys were promoting a show you were doing. And it was like this really fucked up, awkward interview where you started talking about banging his wife and stuff. Oh, that yeah, was yeah. that was like some of the funniest stuff I've ever Is that seen. Great? Yeah. That was a classic. <laughs> and he's trying to like end it, and you just keep going. You're like, well, you know, I didn't take too long, so don't yeah, feel bad. Yeah, and yeah. The door sticks. Yeah, he keeps going on yeah, and on. Was she any good? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you when you just, go on the road, you know, you do local press, which is we've been doing here in LA, and you know, we we're out in Kansas City, and we've done like a ton of stuff, and we we're doing a local morning show, and they're very. They're used to having like Dave Coulier and comics yeah. like that who are very safe and they're going to make fun kid jokes and we're just like, let's just blow this up. No, you could tell at the beginning too, he's like, so you guys like to rock out? Yeah, <laughs> he just, yeah and he had he a suit on. Yeah, he didn't quite yeah. really... So, so we were like, let's, yeah, let's put this guy through the ringer. So we had a good time with it and we put it out on the internet and people loved it, so... What do you think it is that there's always been this link between rock and roll and, and, and stand-up comedy and when you watch at least a lot of the documentaries I've seen, like the behind the scenes, like just the coke and the hookers and everything, you don't really hear that from like the movie side as much. There's more of a rock and roll lifestyle, I guess, with the stand-up comedy that goes with that. What, what do you suppose the connection is? You saw it with Kennison, you saw it with Dice Clay, yeah, Lenny uh, Bruce even going real. back. I don't know. It's not really is it? crazy anymore. Yeah, with the stand-up. But even the, even the music isn't. Everybody's got juices back. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so no one's going crazy either. If someone does, I was like, that guy's nuts. What the hell's wrong with him? You know. So that was more of an '80s thing. I think yeah. so. Yeah, even that just a time with the comics in the '80s. I know. Yeah. Before I started, they said they would just be doing eight ball of coke before they even got on stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be completely hammered, start drinking in the morning and stuff like that. That mm-hmm. shit don't go on anymore. Yeah, but that, I mean, there's still a connection between you know with comedy and with metal because most metal bands have a great sense of humor about themselves. You know, some of our biggest influences comics are actually guys like David Lee Roth, who was just so funny naturally, you know, as a musician, as a front man, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so like, you know, over the top and like we, you know, incorporate some of that stuff. Into our act. You know, Ozzy, even to this day, Ozzy in any interview is like Rodney Dangerfield, you know, he's got yeah. a million one liners. Yeah, I don't even think he's trying he's to be funny, he just is, yeah. Yeah, so, and, and the late great Pete Steele, you know, from Typo Negative, man. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, always that self-deprecating, deadpan kind of Stephen Wright thing, so... You know, there's always a lot of humor in metal, and uh, so, you know, I, I think there's still a connection that way, but, yeah, the days of, you know, the excess and all that stuff is, like Jim said, like, a lot of guys have juicers and steamers and stuff back yeah, It's a deli tray, a beer, yeah. and maybe someone snuck in a joint, and that's about that's yeah, the extent the, the of it. Most, it's yeah. more of a business now, you know, people realize, you know, there's a lot of money at stake, and, right. you know, just do your job, so. It's good and bad. You know, the people always make, like, Axel, that guy's crazy, it's like, he shows up late and he's weird. It's like, yeah, finally, somebody mm-hmm. that does something, you know, out of the box. Dave, right. the guy tonight was just saying, you know, Dave was staying. You know, how is he? Is he a good, because he, he's, you know, he says all this weird stuff. I love him, but I'm like, 
He's a, he's, he's a rock star. He's allowed to. Yeah, yeah. I dig it. Alex Jones and Prison Planet and all the stuff that yeah. he's into. It's fascinating. Love Alex Jones. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the guy, especially for you know doing the television show, you know, guys like Mustaine or Phil Anselmo, you know, Marilyn Manson. These guys are outspoken. You ask them anything, they're going to just give you a blunt answer. They're going yeah. to tell you the truth, and you know they're not going to censor themselves. So, you know, for television purposes, we love that kind of thing. It's good to see that there's still some debauchery, some rock stars yeah, out there. Yeah, still. yeah, yeah. So it's all good. You know, you have Phil Anselmo on. You don't want happy. Shiny Phil. Right. You right. want the caveman, bro. Oh, bro yeah. You yeah. can't keep the kid down. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, yeah. And, you know, that's what we love. And then uh, that's what the, makes those guys tick. Right on. And you guys have actually opened up for bands well, we with your set uh, comedy. We did the Orion Fest for Metallica the first time. Right. Year. And you did yeah. Megadeth with the Gigantor. <laughs> yeah, Gigantor. And then I did a Slayer Megadeth Anthrax tour in 2010. Yeah, so. well, you said that was like emceeing a rape, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like emceeing a rape. <laughs> yeah. What's that like? Is that is it? Is there a bit of butterflies and kind of nerve wracking yeah, to get I, up in front? If, if I wasn't on that metal show, I wouldn't have even done it. Yeah, because I would have got crucified. Mm -hmm. You know, so walking out there, like probably seventy percent of the crowd knows who I am, so that helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they'll give you the benefit of the doubt for, for a couple minutes, but that's all you need just to get them. Mm -hmm. But it's still nerve wracking every night just doing it. Like, oh, you got to deal with these assholes. And, you know, people just screaming and yelling. And yeah, half of them are drunk. I, I was just, just trying to tell them, I go, look, I got to do five minutes up here, okay? I'm not taking any time away from Slayer, mm. so fucking relax. <laughs> I'm going to do some dick jokes, I'm going to do some sex jokes, some drinking jokes. You don't like it? Go take a piss or go get a beer. Yeah. And I go, I'm, Slayer's not going to do one last song because I'm up here. Right. I have to do five minutes. They're not coming on for six minutes, so... I'm going to do five minutes, right? So I had to really tell them because people really think they... They're, they're not going to play when South of Heaven, you motherfucker. Yeah, 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 yeah. When I was a kid and the local <laughs> DJ would go out, meanwhile, that local DJ, that station never played Priest or whoever I was seeing. Mm -hmm. But I, when he was out there babbling, I'm like, I'd be in the crowd, shut the fuck up, man. Fuck, I want their Priest is less time now because they're just fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah. So I have to tell the crowd. You have to let them know Look, that... Look, they go on, you know, Slayer goes on at 9.45 every night. Right. I go right. On at 9.39. Yeah, at they have set times and contracts and yeah. start getting dinged yeah, real yeah. bad if you go over. Well-oiled machine. Yeah, absolutely. You know, doing up here, but it was fun doing it, though. It definitely was. The Orion Fest was different because, you know, all the fans knew that Metallica handpicked all the acts, the comics, the bands, everything. So there was definitely this respect, like, all right, Metallica says these guys are funny guys, and it was me and... And Jim and Jim Brewer mm. and um, he's you know, a big Lars came down too. and introduced us, you know. So it was like you know the fans had to like go okay if Lars is going to come down and yeah we got to be cool James with it. Came down and introduced Brewer, so that was a, a totally different thing. But that was funny too because we did that on a Saturday. We did you know Orion Fest five thousand kids on our at our stage and doing our comedy and just killing and. And having a great set. And that the following Thursday, I played a pizza place in North Jersey. Wow. That's showbiz, bro. Yeah, that, well, that's what I was going <laughs> to ask you about. You guys have been doing the comedy thing for quite a while. Um, how do you, after all these years, hecklers, do you have a certain way of dealing with it? Do you, do you just ignore it? Does it get to you? Yeah, it all depends. We don't, definitely don't ignore it. But it all depends. It, it was funny because at those Slayer shows, you know, they were in arenas. They would always... Every like third show, there'd be one kid in the front who would be screaming. At a comedy show, you know, so you were at the show tonight. If someone yeah. heckles, you're gonna hear what he says. Yeah, the whole you're gonna get called this out. This guy right. here, fucking in the third row, go, you fucking suck. Get the fuck off the stage, you piece of shit. Fuck you. I hate. Shut the fuck up. That ain't funny. Screaming, and I can hear him. So this is what I would do just to fuck with him. I go, what is that, sir? Because only like eight people around them can hear. I go, yeah. what? You, you're my biggest fan? <laughs> hey, get this guy. What? You came here. You don't even want to see Slayer. You came here just to see me? <laughs> dude, give this guy a hand. Come on. That's, dude, I'm not worth the $70. He's like, fuck you. But only fucking eight people around. <laughs> that's people right. Like, yeah, I'm like, dude, I'm going to be at the merch table afterwards. Come by, man. I'm going to fucking sign. I'll give you a t-shirt. Like, what a guy. Yeah, came all the right. way out in the ring. No idea. I was just cock blocking him. <laughs> Spend his lunch money. Dude, I'm not that funny. Out. Fucking relax. I'm really not. <laughs> right. So I just but like yeah, in a club, sometimes. look in a club. Every comic has a, a different style. You know, mm -hmm. if you're if you're you know Andrew Dice Clay, you know you launch into it. Yeah. You know, and you engage in battle. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tend to like let people sort of bury themselves. Yeah. You know, okay, let them keep screaming, and then and then you could just feel the whole crowd turn on them. 
and then you, and then it's like, okay, this is over now, right? Okay, now we can move on. But everyone has their own technique, but it's just part of the gig, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, you know part of the job. You just deal with it. And, I always yeah. think back to the was it Kramer the the meltdown that guy had in yeah, six. That yeah. was absolutely uh, he, just terrible. Wasn't, he wasn't a season, you know, he wasn't a real comic, so he didn't right. know he he thought he was trying to do something avant garde, but he just didn't know how to deal with a heckler in any way. So he you know he fucked his whole yeah thing life up pretty much. I would imagine. Yeah, but you know, look, if, if you're gonna heckle at a crowd. Said a comic's not funny, then whatever he says back, you deserve. Yeah. I don't care if it's a racial slur, whatever it is, don't fuck. He's going to start shit. Don't cry when he comes back with something better or meaner. Right. I mean, if you're sitting there in the first place, if why you are you there? Somebody, you're, you're not funny, dude. Tell, you, you suck. You're basically, that's the worst thing you can tell a comic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, when he's on stage in front of that, he's having a bad day at work and you, you, you don't like what he's doing. So if I come back and say something back to you, don't go, oh, do it away. Hey, you know. So I, I don't buy that, you know, but that's, the, the, the key is you have to get the crowd on your side when you come back at the heckler, make sure that they feel bad for that guy, because you come back really quick, like Kramer did there, mm -hmm. the crowd wasn't ready to hate those people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, once that's they, why I once said, let, let them hang themselves a little let bit. Let them hang them and then And you, then you bang, you know, you hit them hard. But right. Sometimes it works where someone yells something, you yell something back, something mean, and the crowd loves it, but... You know, the crowds are so sensitive these days, they fucking groan at anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, everybody's mean, God forbid, you know. Yeah, you hurt my all feelings. All shit, so you really got to soften it, you know, let them keep annoying the crowd. And then at one point, the crowd's like, shut this, this guy, fuck, I fucking shut up. Yeah. And then when you hit them, they're like, oh, yeah, good, you got them. Has your skin, would you say, as, as a comic's grown thicker over the years? Like, when you first started out, was it a lot tougher, you know? Like, say you have a bad show or whatnot. Yeah, well, no, like, you still always take them personally, I think. Do you? Yeah. Well, I yeah. think you you got to start with a thick skin, and then, yeah, you just, you know, doing comedy, it's, it's like sports. I mean, it's like it's like going through a baseball season. It's like, if you go, you know, if you have a bad night, all right, I got another game tomorrow. I went 0 for 4 tonight, but mm. you know what? Tomorrow I might go 3 for 4. You know, I can't get too down about it. I can't, and then you can't get too up about it either because every comic, if he does 50 shows in 50 days and 49 of them are phenomenal and the 50th one was horrible. Is that the one you're going to dwell on? One. Really? Okay. But you just, you just learn to not take it as personally, yet, you know, as you did when you started. Right. But no, you always do because, you know, at the end of the day, obviously, you, you know, you want to give a good show and, you know, nobody... no. You, like he said, if someone says you suck, no comic goes up there thinking I suck. I mean, you're, yeah. you know, you're giving your all, and absolutely, you know, you, you know, if someone insults you like that, it's like, wow, man, you know, I'm up here really working hard, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, you know, over the years you go, all right, you know what? Tonight wasn't a great night. Tomorrow is another night, and you know, maybe we'll fucking knock it out of the park. Now, besides your Emmys that you each won in 2004 for your work on, was it Enter the NFL? Yeah back on HBO, and I, you guys have met and interviewed everyone under the sun. Is there one piece of memorabilia that like means the most to you? Whether it's like a rare vinyl, something signed, well, the Emmy, some other print? Know, I mean, because I was single for like five years after we got the Emmy, and that was my, yeah, I put that on my nightstand, so when I had chicks over, <laughs> that was my closer, you know what I mean? That was like my Mariano Rivera. <laughs> yeah, she was up the side and she walked in there like, all right. It's like, wow, he's got an yeah. Emmy. I, uh, yeah. I was, as soon as the chick walked in the room, that Enter Sandman would start playing. Yeah. Say, <laughs> I was, so was going to give him a hand job, but yeah. I, you know. Don would jog from the bathroom into the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, no, it was I, I'd be in there sometimes, I'd be fucking rubbing the condom like this. You yeah, know, yeah. it up for yeah. 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 yeah, and just say, look, you know. Yeah. Give me a good pat on the ass, you know, <laughs> send me in, you know. <laughs> But yeah, that, that was a great honor, you know, to think, you know, a couple slobs from New Jersey who like think farts are funny in our mid forties who would win Emmys. That's, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And now you're coming up on season thirteen of that metal show. That's gotta feel pretty good too, I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah, that is dope. Got a mortgage to pay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you stoked to be back in your hometown, back in Jersey, New York area? Yeah. We, yeah, we love coming out here to do it, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially, with, you know, to be in the warm weather out here. Most of the guys live out here. Right. You know, the only problem is doing it home, like it's all family and friends. So everybody wants tickets and nobody knows what the hell they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got tickets. What do I do? I don't know. 
What do you do when you go see fucking Billy Joel? You call <laughs> Billy Joel. Billy, I, uh, what do I do when I get to the venue? I got the tickets. It has yeah. the, the time on it, but yeah. I, what do I do? Yeah, what time you go on? Do, do I go? What, once, I, once I give the guy the ticket, do, what, what, where do I walk? I don't know. Oh God, I fucking figure it out. How do you get through life? <laughs> you know, so you the hometown all, crowd. Where yeah. should I park? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. How the fuck do I know? It's great when we come to LA because I'm like, where are you taping at? I'm like, I, I, in LA. Yeah, but to where? I don't know. Sony. You figure it out. <laughs> yeah, it's off the freeway. <laughs> are you guys still doing the uh, terrorizing telemarketers? No, we haven't done it in a while. So I can't imagine what that must have been like at your house, like all hours of the day. Just yeah, like, how just pissed off is everybody? We got nothing going on in the daytime. Yeah, we just sit around and fuck around and wait for the phone ring. But with you and the wife now, was that tough when the, once you got well, married? I was married at the time. We didn't have any. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we, you pretty much have to have single, yeah. single girlfriends to go, look, I'm getting a, I'll be over Don, you know, Don's house at 8 in the morning and I'll be back like 9 o'clock. Because we're stoked yeah. for telemarketers yeah, to call. Yeah, we're phone the ring. They yeah. don't fucking put up with that. Yeah. You know, so uh, we might still do another one. I'm not sure, but it was fun doing it. But you really have to have nothing going on in your life. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was like on your podcast, too, you are saying you had that segment on, like, annoying things about Facebook and the torture it took you to actually have to go through Facebook and read oh, yeah. all the nonsense on there just to, Real, yeah. just to oh, research no, 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 it. Yeah, you know, I got to sit there for fucking, like, three, four days and read these fucking poems. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Looking at cat pictures and... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah fine picture cat. Look at my cat. <laughs> Look at my fuck. <laughs> Facebook's, Facebook's brutal, man. It's brutal. Well, it's like you say, it makes sense if you have a business, but yeah, once you get to a certain you age, business, it gets a little ridiculous. It's a great place to promote. Yeah. They go to my page, there's coupons there, like, whatever you got to do. I get that, but, you know. You know, like, someone says, finally, the laundry's done. Yeah, I went to the gym today. Yeah, 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 everybody's <laughs> posting pictures. Yeah. Just got back from the gym, uh, you know, hard workout, take a picture, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, right. Who gives a shit? Yeah. You're, just bra- you're just trying to brag. Yeah, essentially. That's all they're doing on there most of the time. Yep. Look at me. It's like Warhol said, everyone's famous for 15 minutes. I guess that's their uh, 15 Pretty much, minutes. yeah. I mean, if we've had our 15 minutes of fame. That's you guys have done quite well. Over. Well, with everything, I mean, you guys have been doing this for a while between the comedy and that metal show since 2008. Is there a specific highlight for you? Like one thing, one event? Like if you were to... There was so a you were to in Atlanta reti- once. All right, there you I go. I'm going to talk about it because I know it's a family show. But <laughs> yeah, right. No, you know what? Sorry, this whole kids. thing is about the journey, man. It's like the, the whole thing's been great because, like, what's going to happen even after this? Like, that's what's exciting about yeah, it. Yeah, right? Who- what's, you know, yeah, for me, it it's really, really is doing the show with my two best friends and talking about the only music that I ever loved. And uh, being on TV and getting paid for it. I mean, that's, you know, that's really cool, you know, because... You know, you know, when you're a kid, your parents tell you, oh, be a doctor, be a lawyer. And it's like, ah, I'm, you know, my mind doesn't work like that. You know, I want to, you know, I have kiss posters on my wall. Like, I'm, I, you know, I think a different way. And, you know, for it to, to work in a creative field and, and then end up working with your best friends and, and uh, do what we do, that's, to me, the, the coolest thing. Right on. So you just finished wrapping up your second comedy CD. Right, yeah. you recorded that in December? Hellbent, Hellbent for, for Laughter, yeah. Nice with the Priest. Nice. Out on Metal Blade March 18th. That's right. And then you've got Awful Jokes from my comedy notebook. My first comedy notebook, that's your second one. No, I have... I have no, I have... Uh, oh, no, you've got... You've got I've got two others. Stand-up. Right. I've got three stand-up. You've got the one that's got the Ball Breaker cover on it, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a, um, Anger is a Gift is another one. Yeah. And Cringe and Purge. Cringe and Purge, yeah. So I've got three stand-up, one Awful Jokes. And I'm working on it. I'll have another one out soon. So you guys are busy. That's yeah. good. And then you've got on the 18th at Mexicali. That's kind of, is that kind of like the launch for the new season of that metal show? It's going to be you and Eddie, the three of you guys? No, we just got booked that that was an open Saturday they had at the club. You guys are still going to hang out. Like a live show. Like right. Me and Don do stand-up. Mm-hmm. Eddie will come out and tell some stories. Then we all sit on the stage, you know, tell some more stories. Mm-hmm. And then we do a Q&A with the audience. Then we do some trivia at the end of the show. Yeah, it's, it'll be like a you know we'll, it'll be like a little pregame, little tailgate party, right you know, before the the first episode of the new season, season thirteen airs. So yeah, we you know we like to get out together and do some live shit together, and so uh, that'll be at Mexicali, and then we're gonna have a bunch of other dates coming up with the three of us. 
when the seasons roll around, you guys, do you have to do a lot of prep work beforehand? Like research, research wise? Not really. I mean, we do no? most of the guests and we're fans of the band, so Ted Nugent's coming on. So I yeah, I saw that. That's going to be wild. I fucking look at one thing about him. Yeah. Just let I Ted go. For an so, hour, yeah. Yeah. And shit like that. So most of the guests, Zach Wild, you know, Vinnie Paul. Yeah, you've had him on. Guys, and yeah, you know, just, so most of the shit we don't have to. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We, we just want to make it seem like a, a regular, like what we're doing now. We're just yeah, just hanging out and chilling. You know? And that's how we want it to be. And, and you know, we, you know, he'll know some people better than I will, and, or I'll know some people better than Eddie, or, or whatever, you know. So we, you know, but we all chime in, and, and we see where the conversation goes. And, you know, we're just fans, so, you know, we hopefully always hit the points that other fans like us want to hear. Right. You know, but at the same time, sometimes these conversations go off in weird directions, and you know, usually if we dominate it, you know, someone shows up with a bottle of absinthe, or, and, you know, it, it goes yeah. to some weird places. But uh, but no, it's just it's supposed to be a, just a sit down, hang out, chat, and that's uh, that's what we do. Right on. And of all the um, the different guys you hang out with, say you're going out for a night, you know. Is there like one particular group or person where you're like, this is just going to hurt the next morning? Joe Bartnick over here. Joe Bartnick? Yeah. He, That's uh, his he, pain right there? Yeah, he drinks Crown Royal and then things get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> or, you mean a specific person? or? Yeah, or a band or just like... Well, when Dimebag was alive, we drank with Dimebag. Oh, shit, okay. It was, you know... Ten years past our prime. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, yeah that... No, that is more of a or the crown royal on that. Shots. Yeah, he would chase you with a shot in his hand and never spill a drop. Yeah. <laughs> if you tried to go and hide in the bathroom, he'd follow you in the bathroom. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. That shot. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, he was, but it, it was you know he was a legend. It was great, but yeah, you really had to be careful around him. You knew you weren't getting behind a wheel. I slept in my car one night after a, I think they played in Philly. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck. The fuck, I'm sleeping in my car. Cause okay, he got me so hammered. <laughs> yeah. Four of us takes off, and it's like three in the morning on a street in Philly. Like, <laughs> yeah. okay. I couldn't even see. And I'm just put the seat back. I woke up like six hours later. Yeah. My girlfriend kept calling. I was I was a fucking out cold, so I was cheating on her. Oh shit! Like, Look, I fucking drank with Dimebag last night in my car. So I don't believe you. I go, I couldn't. I couldn't move with one foot, or I would have been in jail for ten years. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So. <laughs> you got to call Dime back. Yeah, take my girl out now and show her what yeah, happens. Like, no, you fucking text my chick and tell her you got me hammered. Hey, take her out drinking so she understands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was an amazing guy. Well, what advice would you give to up-and-coming comics that are thinking of getting into the business or start to make an attempt at it? Any particular advice you'd give to them? All right, just say just... Um, just Get up there and do it. That's usually for com for people who want to do comedy. The, the hardest step is the first one, which is stepping onto the stage, you know. And then, guy, you know, twenty years later, guy, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And like, if you haven't done it by now, you're not doing it. Right. So that's the first step. Just get up there and start, and then see how it feels. Yeah. Like, you'll know after the first time if you want to do it again. A bit like it'll surfing. Be like, you know, I don't, I've never done drugs in my life, but. You know, from everything you hear, like if you do like a really intense drug, they go that you you can be hooked the first time. That's what comedy is. Like you get hooked the first time. You walk up stage and you go, I have to get that high again. You know? Yeah. And you yeah. chase that. You know. Kind of like surfing. Once you get the balls to drop in on the wave, you're either gonna dig it or you're gonna absolutely yeah. be terrified. Yeah. But you gotta take that step. Right. So that that's what I would say. And then you know, like you said, you have to have. A th There's a lot of other stuff to it, but the first step is to get on the stage. But you do have to have a thick skin. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you guys for having us out, oh, for God, giving us your it, time. Man. Yeah, yeah. It, man. Where's the best place people can find you guys online uh, if they want to keep up with you? No, online. Oh, you said it. Uh, Uporn.com. Pornhub. Yeah, I got a, uh, a few big channel. Spankwire. You, know. <laughs> you can see me in a massage parlor right across the street in about 20 minutes. Yeah, four yeah That's funny. <laughs> that. yeah. They don't really need four hands. So. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a four finger special. <laughs> Shit. Uh, Jim Blarty.com, Don Jameson.com, and of course, you know, that metal show. Set on that metal show, new season, January 18th, and uh, twelve you. episodes. Thanks to everybody and you guys too for supporting us, and uh, in, yeah, I mean, thirteen seasons. Like, how? I think like The Simpsons have only been on like twelve seasons. So, and thank you guys for flying the banner for metal. Yeah, that's right, man. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, we're not. What else do we know? Right. You, you know do what, what you mean? love. You do what you love, yeah, and you love what you do. What we know. And that's got to be everybody's dream. I mean, just if we start to be doing able that to. Country show, then you go. Oh, these guys are following. Yeah, if, if you're, yeah. Metal, so. Garth Brooks next week on that metal show. Yeah. All right. Well, right on. Thanks again, you guys. All right, this is Mad Cat Music. Whoops. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah, Why you, you, you start? I thought you, I was supposed to start. I was it's just going to intro you guys. This is not our show. This is his show. No, no it's his. Right, right, my cue. Oh, okay. So, that I can, so he starts it so, it'll, so I can synchronize the audio with the video. All right, let's try, okay. let's try it again. No, so you said are you, whenever you're ready. I said I'm ready because I didn't know. All right, all right let's try it again. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, whenever you're ready. So here we are at the... Um, <laughs> oh, was that? <laughs> Take three. Were you going to do yeah. that? I didn't know. If... Watch. Uh, All right, this is Mad Cat Music Review. We're here with Jim Florentine. I didn't know if you were going to. Oh, right. There you go. All right. You have to take it from the top. <laughs> or is this right? <laughs> you guys or... Are... However you guys want to do it. No, I'm telling you guys the ones that have mean... to edit it and do all this stuff. I don't know. I don't know how that works. I mean, John? are you going to leave all this in? or? No, we're going to edit it out probably. You're going to edit this out? Uh, well, unless you want us to leave it in. That's the best part. It may I know, be right? bloopers at the end. How's all right, that? All right, all right. So let's start over. Go ahead one more time. Okay. All right. Because <laughs> we're used to, like, when they say, are you ready, then we start talking. It's <laughs> right. not our show. Okay, yeah. All so right. now John will lead it. So you have to, you're on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, Mad Cat Music Viewer here with Jim Florentine. Alright, so here we are at the Mad Cat Music Viewer. Alright, so here we are at the Mad Cat Music Viewer. Alright, so here we are at the Mad Cat Music Viewer. Alright, so here we are at the Mad Cat Music Viewer. Alright, so here we are at the Mad C